Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and hopefully you've been listening to some of my videos for the new curriculum for AP Psychology, and hopefully you're finding them helpful. If you are, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. And leave me a comment, too, to let me know what you like, or if you want to see anything else, or what's really helpful, or what would be even more helpful for you. That, would, that way I can make some new videos to help you guys uh, prepare for the AP exam. So today we're going to look at AP Psychology 2.7 forgetting and other memory challenges. So we are going to start as we always do with the CED question for this particular section of the unit. And the question is explain possible reasons why memory failure or errors may occur. So we're going to look at the key terms here. So these key terms are going to be embedded into this um, video. So I'm going to go through it and I'll explain how it works and how it relates to this particular question. But I'm also, as usual, going to do a separate video with just the key terms, definition and real life example so that you can do your flashcards or wherever you, however you decide you want to remember your words, which is super important in AP Psych. You've got to know the key terms, right? So let's get started with the first slide here. So introduction to memory failures. So we have to understand memory failures and errors. So first of all, memory is a crucial cognitive function, but it's not infallible. Various factors can lead to forgetting or distortions in memory. So what does make that happen? So we're gonna start about, we're talking about the forgetting curve. So what is the forgetting curve? That was developed by a man named Herman Ebenhauser and uh, sorry, Ebenhaus. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. So Herman Ebenhaus, this curve illustrates how memory retention declines over time. Memory loss is rapid immediately after learning and slows down over time. So we're looking at, if you look at the graph, you can see when we, when we actually think of something, we remember it immediately. But as we go, as time goes, you tend to forget it. It slows down, right? And we all know that that happens. A lot of this stuff is really logical if you think about it, right? So we're going to look at why does encoding fail? Because we talked about in the other videos, what happens, right? We have that encoding, we have recall, we have retrieval, but why does encoding fail? Well, not all information that we encounter is stored in our memory because the brain's quite selective about the encoding process. Often the brain overlooks trivial details. It focuses instead on encoding information that it deems more relevant or necessary. The selective process can lead to gaps in memory where less important details are just simply not retained. So that affects our ability to recall these minor aspects later. Interference in memory. So we're going to look at proactive interference and we're going to look at retroactive interference. And again, these will be in the key terms a little bit later as well. So memory interference occurs in two main forms, proactive and retroactive. Proactive interference happens when old memories hinder the ability to remember new information. So for example, an old phone number can make it difficult to remember a new one. And retroactive interference is the opposite, where new information affects the recall of older memories, such as learning a new address and then struggling to recall a previous one. These types of interference demonstrate how new and old memories can compete within our memory system and impact our ability to recall information accurately. Okay, now we're going to look at retrieval failures, failures and the tip of the tongue phenomenon. So the tip of the tongue phenomenon is a common type of retrieval failure where information feels like it's just out of reach, even though it stores in memory. So it's stored in your memory. This happens when we're unable to access certain details at the moment, such as like struggling to recall a familiar name during a conversation. Or sometimes, you know, when you're trying to write an essay or something and you're like, I have the word, I know the word that I want to find. Like, I know this word would be perfect in this situation, but I just can't seem to Read it. It's like right on the tip of my tongue, right? So, but that would be tip of the tongue phenomenon. The issue highlights the challenge within our memory system where despite the presence of information, temporary barriers prevent us from retrieving it. Okay, we're gonna look at repression. So repression is a psychological defense mechanism. Psychological repression is a defense mechanism theorized by Sigmund Freud, which involves unconsciously blocking painful or traumatic memories from entering our conscious awareness. This mechanism helps individuals cope by preventing emotional overwhelming memories from surfacing, which can often be linked to traumatic experiences. So repression illustrates how the mind actively works to protect itself from psychological distress by keeping certain distressing memories out of reach. Reach. Although these repressed memories can still influence our behavior and emotional responses. 
how memories can be distorted. So we have different ones we're going to look at. We're going to look at misinformation effect, which is new misleading information can alter memories. Source amnesia. This is forgetting the source of a memory. Constructive memory. Memories can be influenced by imagination and biases. I'll go into these more on the uh, key terms video. And that's all I have for 2.7. So that's explain possible reasons why memory failures or errors may occur. So we're going to go on to the key terms video now and then 2.8. Okay. And if you like the video and you find it helpful, like I said, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you next time.